Good afternoon. I almost said morning. It's not morning. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to my classroom. I'm Brittany and I'm a second grade teacher here in Utah. This is my fourth year teaching. And today I thought I'd show you around my classroom and tell you where I got everything because we've got a lot of people who are getting ready to accept teaching jobs or students who are graduating and finding out where their placements are and wondering how in the world do I make my classroom as beautiful as the ones I see on the internet. And mine's pretty simple. As you know from my classroom setup video, I do not believe in following all internet trends and so I don't have everything in the world in here. No twinkly lights, no shiplap, and we're still learning. Um, but I will show you where I got everything I do have so you can start to get an idea of how to furnish and collect things for your classroom. So we're just going to do like a classroom tour of where did you get that? No swipe up links, but lots of fun information. So here we go. In an effort to not in an effort to not make this the most boring video you have ever watched in the history of your life, I'm going to not show literally everything, but a majority of things, at least the things that I know where I got them from. So I'm just gonna start at the door where I am here and kind of work my way around the room. If there's things that I'm like, yeah, I don't really need that, then I won't mention it, but I'll just kind of give you a gist of an idea of where you get things and maybe some thoughts on how to get things. Okay, bookshelves um, often left in your classroom because these kinds of things are big and heavy and nobody actually needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, something like 13 bookshelves in their house. So people don't bring those with them. So bookshelves, look for the ones that have been left behind. I've mentioned this before, but mine have fun features of like things I can't get off on them. And that's okay too. Baskets also left behind by somebody. I was like, hey, those will work for what I need. And I grabbed them. Do they match everything else in here? No, but they work. So that's great too. Left behind by another teacher. I think these are originally from Walmart, but they were left behind in my classroom. Basically what I'm telling you is a lot of the stuff that you're going to see here today was left in this classroom. And believe it or not, most classrooms you enter will have a decent amount of stuff that comes with them, whether it's other teachers in the school getting rid of it or it was left specifically for use in that classroom. These are from either Target or Walmart. I can't remember which one, but that's where you can get those. Oh, these baskets are all from the kitchen section in Walmart, I think is what I said. So these are all kitchen drawer organizers. They work great for holding little guided reading materials, and they're very sturdy. So that's where those are from. I'm assuming those are from Target as well. The posters I made... The letters were from Target dollar section a long time ago. They don't have them anymore. The paper is from Target and the whiteboard is from Walmart. These dry erase sleeves that I have with the posters and for the kids and their desks were an Amazon order. These maps came from Donors Choose. If you don't know what Donors Choose is, it's a beautiful place um, where you can write a grant for things that you want for your classroom and your friends and family, kind of like a GoFundMe, can donate to it. But because it's specifically meant for teachers and classrooms, a lot of organizations and big companies in the world will contribute or match people's donations, or you only have to raise half the funds and they'll just gift you the other half. So Donors Choose is an awesome way if there's specific things that you know you want for your classroom, the stools, point here. Um, and those chair bands that are hanging on the wall back there and my maps all came from donors choose. I knew I wanted them in my classroom. It added up to be a lot of cash. So I wrote a grant and said, this is what I want to have in my classroom. Who'd be willing to donate? And actually a lot of it was graduation gifts to me because I did it right after I graduated from college. So you could ask people to donate to like a classroom fund rather than giving you a graduation gift. That would work great too. So my maps are from Donors Choose, the rain gutter that I hold my books in because buying a book display shelf is very expensive, is from Home Depot, and the guys at Home Depot cut it for me, and I just put the end caps on. It was supposed to Velcro with like command strips to the wall, but it is warped so it doesn't, so it just sits there. That's fine too. All the bins that my books are in are from Dollar Tree. And these ones were from Walmart because they just happened to have the color I wanted one year, so I grabbed a bunch. Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree. These are from Ikea. You can also order them on Amazon. They're just the paper book boxes, as you can see by the end of the year. They are destructed and need to be replaced, but they'll last for the year, so it's fine. 
All right, let's talk books for a second. Where in the world did I get all these books? The majority of them were discards from the library, left in the classroom by pre previous teachers or discards from other teachers. Over the summer, most teachers, because we're all a little bit of organization freaks, go through our stuff and get rid of things. I've already got a pile of get rid of books in my back room. And we're like, oh, I don't need this. Or, oh, I got a new copy of this. Or no kids read this or whatever we do with them. So you can go through a lot of free books from your school. Um, I would talk to your office staff and your administration to find out what do they do with surplus and when can you come look through it because that way you can kind of get stuff from there. Now remember, this is an accumulation of four years. This is not what my library looked like my first year. My first year was two shelves, two little bookshelves, and now we're at five plus a bunch in the back. So you accumulate it over time. Just remember your classroom's not going to be like picture perfect 100% right off the bat. Give yourself some grace. You're just starting and the kids don't care. So that's where those mostly came from. Some of them are from like Target Dollar Spot. Some of them are ones that I got at the book fair. We get to put books into a basket and the parents can buy them for us. Some of them are that way. I bought some of them off of Thrift Books, which is a used bookstore online. You could get them from like the Goodwill. Um, yeah, that's mostly where these are from. And you start off with some pretty raggedy, sad books. And then over time, you can use money that you've been given from a school budget or a legislative budget or donations or donors choose or something like that to slowly replace them. So like my Magic Treehouse just got replaced over the summer. My Junie B. Jones set got replaced over the summer. I used to have ones that were falling apart and so sad, but you replace them over time. So books, look for ones that people are getting rid of. Watch for like garage sales, um, Goodwill, online thrift books is a used bookstore, libraries that are getting rid of books. Often libraries have a used book section. They sell books for really cheap. And then a lot from just the school around you. My beanbag that is well loved was from Walmart. That was another grant, I believe, that I wrote. Our city does a grant every year for teachers. And that is what I got with it one year. All the stuff on my desk, that's all from Goodwill. That was a gift was in that basket before. These drawers are from Target, I want to say. The buckets are from Michael's. They were their spring collection, and so they were on sale in the fall for really cheap. The mason jars, I think, are still from my mother. Sorry, Mom. These decorations and things are all gifts from students. That clock is from Ikea because it was super cheap. The number line was actually left in my classroom, but it's super easy to print number lines. The crates are collected from throughout the school as different teachers got rid of crates of so things I collected them until I had the matching ones that I wanted. So that's where all of those are from. This is washi tape and wet erase marker on my board to hold all that stuff, which I've mentioned needs to be replaced. The globe was left in my classroom, so I got that. That could be a great donor's choose one. This set of drawers, which I love with all my heart, that holds all our center's work, is from Ikea. I used legislative funds to buy that. Clipboard set was with the classroom. Those baskets are from Dollar Tree, but I didn't get them. They were given to me. The stools are donors choose. I made the poster and those letters are also from Target as well as the pencil. Watch the Target dollar spot. They do lots of teacher good stuff. I've talked about this calendar before. It is an oil drip pan from an auto repair shop. I wrote on it and made all the letters myself. The headings are from a calendar kit that I got at Target my first year. That's from Walmart or Target. I don't remember which one. This bookshelf is from Walmart and is well loved. Those came with my classroom. That's from Dollar Tree. Michael's, I made all the magnets and the stuff that's down there. All these buckets, I believe, are from Dollar Tree. That's from Michael's. That was really cute. Ikea, Walmart, all of these were left in my classroom. They're just shower board. You can get that at Home Depot or Lowe's. This is also shower board that's been installed as a whiteboard. Um, the iPad holders are dish racks from Ikea. And these baskets for my math games are all from the Dollar Tree. The cups for the bathroom are from Dollar Tree. Somebody asked about how I use those. And I'll just clarify really fast. The kids can go to the bathroom whenever they want. They just set this on their desk so I know where they are. It's a good physical reminder to me of where the kid went. So it's basically a bathroom pass. And it also makes sure that only one boy and one girl can go at a time because there's only one boy cup and one girl cup. Once again, in a shocking turn of events, Dollar Tree and donated slash found. These were a grant that I applied for. Our state has a soccer team and they do a grant for teachers and I applied for it and got it. Apply for all the grants. And now we have a nice set of really nice headphones from Amazon. All the boxes with, with the classroom, I've just slowly consolidated them and swapped them out with other stuff that I found in our surplus pile to make them all match. 
these ones are from Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree. These cases, which are the greatest thing that ever happened to the teaching world, are from Michaels, but they also sell them at Walmart. I believe this is from Michaels. I bought it from another teacher. You can tell because it's falling apart. They were retiring, and so they sold that. And everything over here is from, except for that, is from Dollar Tree. So the moral of the story is, though Target is a great place, though Hobby Lobby is beautiful, the Dollar Tree is really your best friend. Basically what we've learned by walking around my classroom. Timers came in a huge set on Amazon. Play-Doh was from Amazon. The folders, I think you saw my classroom setup video from this year, were an update this year that also came from Amazon. And then my extra supplies that we have back here are partly parent donations, partly leftovers. These are all like the broken side crayons. And these would... They're markers. They come from parent donations. We cut all our erasers in half when those get donated. The scissors were a Christmas present last year that I didn't let them take home. So I have a whole brand new set of scissors that I bought them as a Christmas present. Those kinds of things. Extra supplies are like parent donations and then using funds from the school to get all of these books back here were got the same way the last books were. This is what I was talking about. The donors choose chair bands. These go on the bottom of their chairs so they can bounce their feet against them. Old reading curriculums that your school doesn't use anymore are awesome supplemental guided reading materials. You can keep those too. And I think that's everything. I feel like anytime somebody's getting ready to start a classroom, they look on the internet and they get all these ideas and then they show up and they're like, I don't have a plant and I don't have lights and everything here is ugly. It's okay. It's okay. We'll let it be ugly. Do little things to make it you. But remember, the biggest thing that's going to make your classroom a beautiful place is how you teach and the atmosphere you create for your students, not the color of paint on the walls or how many bookshelves of books you have. Spend some time accumulating stuff, but if you are in the range of thousands of dollars, you've probably done something wrong. Like you shouldn't be, and you can, school is your hobby, you know? So like you can do as much or as little as you want, but don't, don't feel obligated to. Nobody needs you to have a full rainforest in your classroom in order for them to be able to learn. And if all your shiplap is not up, Joanna Gaines is not gonna come find you and tell you that your classroom needs a fixer upper. Like it's okay. So I hope that helped for all of you who are like, ah, how do I furnish a classroom? You don't. Look for what your school already has. Start from the ground up and slowly accumulate stuff over time. Find out what kind of funding you have available to you. Use places like Donors Choose. Use places like sports teams that want to give to teachers. There's lots of people who want to help you out. So take advantage of those opportunities and use them to help you be the best kind of teacher you can be with the cutest classroom you can manage. And that's all. Have so much fun decorating your classroom. I'd love to know what other questions you have about where I've got things. Just drop them in the comments below. Also, let me know if you have any ideas for themes that you're working on. I'd love to hear how you guys decorate your classrooms. Mine's color and an animal because that was the simplest thing for me to do. But whatever floats your boat, you can do. I'm going to go put on a boatload of chapstick and I will see you guys next time. See ya.